on from there because I read a really interesting thing about you. Um, Ooh, yeah, really. He hasn't been stalking you, I promise. Yeah, it was research. <laughs> <laughs> research. Um, that you, you did Fans for the Opera in, in, in France. Um, I think it was at the theatre where the story, the, the, the theatre that was actually in the story of Phantom of the Opera. And after rehearsals, the, there was a fire at the theatre and the theatre burnt down. And you guys went and sang on the steps. Yeah. So I was supposed to do Phantom, it, an all French production of Phantom in Paris for the first time at the theatre, uh, Théâtre Mogador, mm -hmm. which has now been rebuilt and they're doing shows, but we were rehearsing. And this is the closest that, that I can relate to what's going on now, where it's like, you can't argue with the virus, you can't argue with the fire. Your theater's on fire, you can't argue with it. You can't be like, maybe we'll work around it. No, you can't. <laughs> You're done, go home. So I had moved to Paris to do this show. I had learned the whole thing in French. Um, and there we are, I'm, with, I'm the only American, so it's, everybody is French in this company. And there, are a, so we, we are, we were rehearsing, we were three days into tech, and then the next morning, I get a call that our theater, it, the stage is burnt. It's on fire and the whole thing, so the, the it's done. Um, and just like that, the show is canceled. Now, the, the, my cast is all these people that this was it for them, you know, because they're, they're in Paris, there's not a whole bunch of different theaters to perform at. You don't have tons of options, like in New York or in the West End or something. Mm -hmm. And they had also never done Phantom before. So this was like, oh, it was so heartbreaking. So in true like French fashion, we all went and had some wine. <laughs> <laughs> there was many tears and uh, there was so much just sadness. It was a really, um, it was a really dark place that everybody was in. And suddenly I was like, hold on a second. Literally the steps of the Paris Opera House, which is where the show is, takes place, is right down there. And I was like, come on, you guys, we're going to the Opera House. We ran, we just ran and ran to the steps. And yeah, we performed as much of the show as we wanted to with all the ballerinas, yeah. everybody we were doing all of Jilly Lynn's choreography um, <laughs> on the steps. And I'll never forget that. And it was like, it was the only way that we could feel joy. Mm -hmm. There was no words, there was no wine, there wasn't enough anything that you could do that made you feel better until we performed. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And that's, you know, it's, that's why people, oh, that's as cheesy as it sounds if you want it to be, but that is, that is absolutely the truth. Yeah. And it's not cheesy at all. No. I mean, it might, I think it's, it might be difficult for some people to understand who don't, who don't get that this is a vocation. This is literally something we're called to do. Like we cannot do anything else. I mean, yeah, of course we can. I can go and work in a, I don't know, a bakery shop or whatever. I could do something else, but we we can't inside our souls. So even now, even in this situation we're in, for, for example, I know that you are taking your ballet classes every day with the amazing Tyler Peck. I want to give a shout out to Tyler there. Yes. I know we are getting up, we're doing our ballet class, we're doing our pas de deux work, we're doing our Pilates because we have to, and we know that there's going to be another show. There is going to be another show. There's going to be a time when we can mm -hmm. do that again. And that's I, right. We, you're right. We, we're going to survive this. Definitely. We are strong. <laughs> Artists are strong. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So um, we've just spoken a little bit, actually, just randomly by saying, you know, we get up and we're doing class and I know mm -hmm. that you're doing class. Um, are you, can you tell us, is there anything that you do to keep your voice in tip top condition? Do you have a vocal regime? I drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's funny. It's weird. During this time, um, right when this started, because it's been about three, a little over three weeks mm -hmm. for in New York, um, I didn't want to sing. I started taking ballet the day, you know, the moment that I knew Tyler was teaching class, I was doing ballet. I was, I do a workout in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't singing. Uh, and I realized that I, I, uh, I don't, I still don't know why. Um, maybe because 
uh, that is the thing that I, it's, it's almost like that's the thing that heals me so much. Mm -hmm. And I almost needed to not do the thing that's going to make me feel better because I needed to be in what's going on. Sure. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah no, it's like mm -hmm. you have a secret weapon. You don't want to use it too quickly. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, no. Took me, it was like one week is when I've, I've, I put online something um, because a friend had asked me, would you do this? And it, it'll, you know, raise money because we're trying to raise money for the actors fund here because there's going to be so many actors and not just actors, everybody that's behind the scenes in the business and stuff that are going to need help. And she asked me if I would do something. And then I thought about it and, and I, and came up with what it what it is and it was to sing no one is alone from into the woods and so i could only uh sing that once i knew that's like oh this is what my soul needs to sing and what i think other people need to hear mm -hmm. because that's the other thing like we're talking about what we do and what we need but the other part of um of this is we're going to be fine because even if for the rest of our lives we have to stay in our homes and do our own thing, we would, we would still perform for ourselves. But mm -hmm. there's something about the need to do it for the other yeah. because we know that that heals the other. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm getting back to even just figuring out what that is and, and all that stuff. Um, so that's the long version answer. But the short version is I just, I don't have like a specific, but I sing, I tend to like, when I wake up, I just do that to see if my voice is there. <laughs> um, and I used to do it a lot more. It's just like, especially when you're doing a show, it's like, do I have it today? It's weird. Um, so that's like a habit that I have. Uh, but like, I didn't warm up or anything before I sang that, uh, the song, uh, no one is alone. I just sort of sang it, but I probably did like a, hmm. I do more things like that. I walk around or hmm. that's it. But if I'm going to do like a big sing or something, I'll do like a warm up. you know, I'll do like a full, I'm not, yeah, I, I have to check where all the parts of my voice are and stuff. But so for people just to, that's like, a lip, like lip trills and sirens is, that's it. You shouldn't have to warm up for more than 15 minutes. I wish the same was true for dance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Take longer and longer these days. It just does. Oh my God. It's like, I used to just do grand bat mods without thinking. And it's like, oh no, I need to stretch it out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's now it's almost like we have to take a class before we take class to be ready yeah. for the class. It's yes. Yeah, you have to do like some type of workout before. Like yeah. I'm so grateful Tyler Peck's class isn't until one. So I know I got to do my workout at like 10. You know? yeah. <laughs> so we have come to the end of our list of questions with the exception oh. of, wait, we have the world famous. I'm saying it's world famous. That is so not true. I'm hoping it's going to be world famous. The world famous okay. quick five questions. <laughs> Okay. We'll get it trending. A little bit of fun. So this is against the clock. You have to give your first immediate answer. No overthinking. Okay. okay. <laughs> first immediate answer, don't overthink. Yeah. yeah. Got it? Yep. Okay. Right. Here we go. Ten questions. Number one, texting or talking? Talking. Cool. Favorite day of the week? Wednesday. Woo! Oh, okay. That was quite... I have to ask why. Because it's like this, I'm, I'm a middle child, so it might be it's like the middle child of the week. Oh, oh okay, cool. Sorry, I had to digress there, okay, just to ch check why. Okay, favorite city in the U.S. apart from the one that you live in? Denver. Denver, Colorado. Okay, cool. Um, did you have a nickname that your parents used to call you? N no. No. Oh. I used to get in trouble for being wild. I feel like my parents used to call me the wild child because I used to get in trouble for being wild all the time. I like that. That's cool. Very nice. We'll go with that. The wild child. Wild you child. First people. This is the wild child. <laughs> wild child. Uh, <laughs> last song that you downloaded. 
Oh, lover, uh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> because Tyler Peck used it in her dance class that's uh -huh. like, and because she was doing it to pop songs and I was like, oh, cool, I like this song and I downloaded it. Nice, <laughs> cool, okay. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or talk to animals? Oh, I actually want to answer with, I want to speak every language in the world because I feel like I already do talk to animals. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, for you guys, Sierra has, it's two cats, isn't it? Yep. Do you have good conversations with your cats? Oh my God, we communicate all the time. And it, and it actually is my vocal warm up. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to try that with Brack and see if he understands. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, what have we got next? Favorite your favorite holiday? I want, it's weird. Easter is what came to me. Oh, oh. okay. Chocolate. Why not? Yeah. Easter eggs. Who doesn't love Bunnies? them? Bunnies. <laughs> yeah. oh. um, how long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Lately, uh, 0.1 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to do makeup, hair, nothing. Like, you just... Lockdown answer. In non-lockdown. <laughs> okay. Uh, not long. It takes me... Like, are we talking shower or no shower? Uh, let's well, say no. No shower. No shower. No shower. No shower. No shower. No, because um, I don't shower before I work out. So I get up and I go work out. So it, it takes me five minutes. I put on, you know, ye old leggings and Not put my hair up. Five minutes. Nice. Cake or ice cream? Yellow cake with chocolate frosting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like you just put an order in. I feel like we should be able to produce that instantly now. <laughs> well, and also I was like, but I also love like, do you guys have Cold Stone? I can't, no, I don't think no. you have Cold Stone. They have this like ice cream that has yellow cake in it. Ooh. And so that's why I was like, oh, that. Because I remember coming over and Snog was a thing. Oh, oh Snog. snog. <gasps> yeah, snog. We used to yeah. go there all the time, didn't we? When they had the but, in Covent Garden. Yeah. yeah, but it's like, and then it wasn't for me. I didn't, I wanted it to, because it was like so cool in the side, like all lit up and like such a cool name and like all this and all the toppings. Unless, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unless I put a mess of toppings on there, I couldn't. <laughs> we kind of, we went through a bit of a phase and then it sort of petered out. It started off very kind of, we've got to have a snog. Yeah. Oh, that nope. sounds terrible. <laughs> okay. We'll just, <laughs> we don't have, a snog is the frozen yogurt. Okay, everybody. Yes. yes. When we say we've got to have a snog, that's what we're talking about. Um, sure. But then it, yeah, it kind of got a bit of a, I don't know, it sort of has a time limitation on it. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, our last question. If you were living an alternative life, so in your, another incarnation, what would your alternative career choice be? Um, I would be a life coach. Oh, wow. Cool. That's, that's just recently come to me. That's like, I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy uh, listening to, or trying to understand the psychology of stuff and then articulate it in a way that might be helpful for somebody. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there we go, everybody. <laughs> that is our quick fire round over. And Sierra, thank you so, so much again for this amazing interview, for allowing us to join you in, in your, your beautiful home. home uh, thank in... you for hosting me in your home. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, so thank you everybody for listening. And please go and check out, if you've not seen Sierra perform, go and check her out on the internet. There's little snippets of her performing. And um, obviously we've spoken about Tyler Peck today. Check out her class. Uh, Sierra, is there anybody that you want to recommend or give a shout out to? Uh, we did it. I think that's good. Like for right now, it's that. And um, just anybody that's coming to you guys uh, during this time too, that's like, that you feel inspired by, just uh, use this time to research. And I always say um, that it's really good to be inspired by, but not to imitate. Mm -hmm. So don't try to be anybody else. It's already been done, but absolutely draw inspiration from them and, and figure out why you love them so much. Are they really brave in their choices? Are they, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, and then be inspired by, but uh, don't 
don't imitate, don't replicate it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, those are beautiful words. Thank you, Sierra. And thank you so much. So we're going to sign off now, guys. So it's a goodbye from me and Paul. Bye, everyone. And it's goodbye from Sierra. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you.